Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Talk Speaker to Me. I'm Conrad Close, and I'm the Content Marketing Manager here at the Speaker Lab. Today, I'm really excited to talk to you about marketing for speakers, and specifically, the three main areas of marketing that you need to master if you want to grow your speaking business. Before we get into today's episode, I want to mention that I would love to hear from you. In my role here as Content Marketing Manager, I oversee all of our podcasts, our social media, our newsletter, our blog, um, pretty much all of the content and resources that the Speaker Lab produces come through our content marketing team here. And so there's ways that we can serve you better. We want to hear them. If there are topics that we haven't covered that you feel like would be helpful, if there are questions that you have that we haven't gone over on a recent episode of the podcast or on the blog, we'd love to, to hear from you and hear your feedback because ultimately we want to serve the speaking community. We want to serve you as speakers and we want to be the go-to resource for questions about how to get booked and paid to speak. So shoot me an email. My email is conrad at thespeakerlab.com. I'd love to connect with you, have a conversation and ultimately continue to create great helpful resources for all of you as speakers here at the Speaker Lab. So on today's episode, we're going to be talking about the three areas of marketing that you need to master as a speaker. Those three areas are personal branding, social media, and SEO. I'm going to give you three tips to master each one of those areas. This is going to be short and sweet. We're going to keep it practical, and hopefully this is helpful to you. I'm not a coach here. I will mention that. I'm not a coach here at the Speaker Lab. I'm not a speaker myself, but I have worked in marketing for the last 10 years, been here at the Speaker Lab for the last two years, and so hopefully I can provide some helpful advice and some practical tips for you as you work to level up your marketing game as a speaker. So let's get into personal branding. Personal branding is one of the most misunderstood parts of marketing because a lot of people think that personal branding is a logo or a tagline or a slogan, and it's not any of those things. It's also not shameless self-promotion. If you want to build a personal brand, you don't have to throw yourself at people. You don't have to shamelessly self-promote yourself in every situation and kind of be pushy or be overly salesy or aggressive. In fact, that's honestly one of the worst ways to try to build a personal brand. When it comes to personal branding, there's three things that you need to focus on. You need to focus on being unique, you need to be authentic, and you need to be consistent. What does that mean? First and foremost, you have to be unique. You can't try to duplicate or copy what other people are doing on social media or with their personal brands and expect it to work from you. You are a gift to your industry. You bring value. You have a story to share. You have a message that needs to be heard. And you need to lean into that when it comes to your personal brand. Embrace the value that you bring, embrace your why, and lean into that across all your social media, across your website, your demo video, the interactions you have in person with people. But be who you are, which leads me to my second point, which is be authentic. You cannot try to be someone that you're not. That's the worst way to try to make a make a name for yourself or make a presence on social media is to try to be someone that you're not. I see this all the time. I see it from speakers. I see it from people in general where they try to seem more important or they try to seem cooler or bigger, more famous than they are on social media. And it just doesn't work. Ultimately, your value is in who you are. Your value is in your story and the message that you have to share. So lean into that, be authentic, be unique, and ultimately be consistent. If you do have a logo, if you do have fonts, colors, or a tagline, whatever those things are that make up your personal brand, be consistent in how you use them. Your logo should be the same across your website, across social media, across your email signature. It's little things, but it makes a huge difference in how you're perceived overall. If you want to dive in more to personal branding, there's some great resources on our blog. We've done some great podcast episodes about it in the past. Um, You can check those out on our website. We'll also put a couple of links in the show notes that might be helpful. So let's get into area number two, social media. One of the things I want to mention about social media before I get into the three tips on how to master this is that you have to have your priorities in order when it comes to social media. I've seen a lot of speakers and I've seen a lot of business owners in general spend a lot of time on social media and not see any results because they're doing it the wrong way. I've also seen a lot of people get really distracted by social media and it makes them lose sight of what's really important. Um, when it comes to building your business. So first off, you have to have your problem and your audience defined. You have to know your why. You have to have your EPS in place, your expert positioning statement. All of those things have to be nailed down before you can start to build an effective social media audience around your speaking business. If you don't have a clear vision and you don't have a clear why and you don't have a clear understanding of the value that you bring, 
your marketing will not work. It won't work on social media. It won't work in general, but especially not online. The other thing I would say is this does not replace outreach. Let me say that again. Social media does not replace cold outreach as a speaker. It's really easy to get distracted. It's really easy to spend a couple hours a day posting on social media, sending connection requests, networking, and think that replaces cold outreach. And it doesn't. It'd be really cool if it did. It'd be great if we could just log on to social media and the gigs would just come flowing into our inboxes, but it doesn't work that way. It's about building your brand so that when you do that cold outreach and you do your power hour and you prospect every day, when people go to look you up, they find your social media. They see the brand that you've built there. They see the consistency and the authenticity and your uniqueness, and it helps to continue to build that positive picture that they have of you in their minds that ultimately, ideally leads to a booked gig. So today I want to give you three priorities for marketing your speaking business and marketing yourself as a speaker on social media. The first one is to find your community. You as a speaker do not have to do everything on every single social media platform to be successful. It's really easy to feel like you have to do all the things in all the places all the time, and you don't. You can be very effective and very successful on social media on one or two platforms because ultimately it comes down to finding your community. Where are your people? Where does your industry go to gather and talk about things? Where do event planners and event organizers and the people who book you, what platforms do they use regularly? What are they on? Um, For most people, that's LinkedIn. LinkedIn is probably the most common and the most effective tool um, when it comes to social media for speakers, but it might be something else. It might be Instagram. If you're in, um, you know, the political world or the nonprofit world, Twitter is very common, um, also known as X. But if you hone down and you're really intentional about seeing where your people are, what platforms they're using, you can make a really consistent, solid impression on those one or two platforms rather than being spread out. You know, it's the old saying, but it's still true. It's really easy to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. And that goes for social media. It's really easy to try to do all the things on all the platforms and you end up not being really good at any one platform and not really making a difference and not standing out because you're trying to do too much. So, you know, Grant talks about, you've heard it if you've listened to our podcast for a while, this being a steakhouse and not a buffet. We use that example all the time. Same thing with social media. Do one or two platforms really well. Create really helpful, valuable content um, for those platforms and you'll be successful much more so than you would if you were trying to spread out across five, six, seven, eight platforms. So the second tip I would give you is to create a conversation. Social media is a two-way street. It doesn't work if you just go on there and post and don't engage in the community. It'd be like if you took somebody out for dinner and you sat across the table from them and you just talked incessantly the whole time. And every time they said something, you just ignored them and talked about something completely unrelated and just continued kind of screaming into the void, if you will. A lot of people try to do that on social media and it doesn't work. You have to be part of the online community that is social media if you want to make a difference. What does that mean? It's really simple. It means cheering other people on, commenting, giving them, congratulating them for successes or milestones in their careers. It means replying with your opinion under other people's posts, joining conversations about things. One thing I'd mention here is do not use AI for this. I see a lot of people who are convinced that they can use ChatGPT or the latest social AI tool to generate comments and it doesn't work. It's so easy to pick those out and it just ruins your personal brand and it kills your authenticity. So again, be who you are. AI is a great tool. There's uses for it, but it ultimately it doesn't capture the authentic picture of who you are and the value that you bring. And so I'd highly encourage you don't use it for social media in the in that way. The last thing I would say is be consistent and do the little things well. Across social media, make sure your posts don't have typos. Make sure, like I said, that your logo and your profile pictures and your overall like brand identity is consistent across the social platforms and your website, and your demo video, things like that. You would be amazed at how much of a difference being consistent and doing the little things well makes when it comes to being successful on social media. So that kind of wraps it up for social media. The last thing I want to jump into is SEO. SEO is probably one of the least understood aspects of marketing but it's actually one of the most important and can be one of the most valuable for you as a speaker and continuing to build your business. So to start off, I'll give you a quick overview. SEO is essentially the process of creating helpful content that is optimized for search engines. What does that mean? Means that when you create content on your website, on your blog, whatever that looks like for you, 
that you are both a making it helpful, meeting a need, creating content that people will find useful and b you're optimizing that content to make it easy for search engines to find it. SEO is really important for everybody, anybody trying to build a business, but it's actually especially important for speakers for three reasons. One, it increases awareness when people are going looking for, say, you know, if somebody Googles education speakers in the Richmond, Virginia area, if your SEO is optimized, you can rank for that term. And believe me, like event organizers will search online for speakers when they're looking to fill a specific spot in a specific niche. And if you're optimized around that, again, optimized for who you are and your authentic brand, you can be very successful finding gigs that way. It also establishes your expertise. If you're creating content that is really helpful, it's really informative. Ultimately, it's unique to your industry, but there's a lot of different ways that you can create content that continues to build your expertise and build your brand. And then third, it creates a lot of organic opportunities for you. Like I said, there will be a lot of people who will find you and find your website through SEO who might not have otherwise could come in contact with you. They'll see you, they may read your articles, they may then follow you on social media, and it creates a connection that ultimately can lead to a lot of booked gigs. We've worked with a number of speakers here who drive a significant number of gigs through their website and through the content that they create for SEO. One of the other questions that I hear a lot is kind of how do I get better at SEO? And so here's the three tips that I'll give you. The first one is to ensure your website is easy to navigate, it's easy to read, and it's easy to use. Your website is the technical side of that is a very important part of SEO. If you're creating content, make sure you have a blog page. Make sure your website is easy to navigate. It's easy to get around. Make sure it's mobile optimized. That's another big one too. Can people access it from their phones? Most searches, the vast majority, I think the last estimate was around 60 to 70% of searches these days come from mobile, not desktop. So it has to be easy to navigate on mobile. If it's not, reach out to a web developer, reach out to a friend who builds websites, something like that, get them to help you build it. There's also a lot of platforms that can be helpful for building websites. Obviously, if you're a student here at Speaker Lab, we build your website and work with you on that. But the second one is to create helpful and original content. It sounds like a no brainer, but the easiest way to be successful at SEO is just creating content that people want to read. It's easy to also over optimize that content for search engines, but I would encourage you to above all optimize for people and the search engine side of things will follow. If you create content that is really useful, it's really valuable. It's really helpful in your industry or in your niche. Ultimately search engines will pick that up. And then the third one is just to continue building your online presence. Google and most search engines look overall at your online presence as part of your SEO. So where are you on social media? Where are you popping up? Do you have a LinkedIn profile? Does your business have a Google My Business listing? For example, if you're a local business, pretty much every element of your online personal brand kind of factors into SEO in some ways. So it's worth building those things out. Don't just focus on your website. Don't just focus on content, but don't forget to build your online presence. That kind of wraps it up for these three things of marketing, but I want to give you a couple of final tips when it comes to marketing for speakers. One, don't let marketing take the place of prospecting. I said this earlier, but it's really easy to get distracted by the shiny things in marketing and spend time, a ton of time doing all these cool, fun things and not doing the hard work of cold outreach and prospecting. Don't let it distract you. Marketing and prospecting go hand in hand, but they can't replace each other. Number two is don't get overwhelmed. It's not as hard as it looks. I know it's easy to just throw up your hands and be like, dang, how do I master all of this? There's so much to do. I got to do social media. I got to do my website. I've got to do this. Take a breath. It's going to come together. And if you break it down into smaller tasks that you can tackle every day for 10, 15 minutes, you would be surprised at the massive difference you can make. A lot of speakers don't tackle marketing because it feels too overwhelming to start. And then they don't ever get into it and they don't ever level up their business in ways that they could because they won't take the 10 to 15 minutes a day to do it. Block out 15 minutes on your calendar to go on LinkedIn if that's your platform and make a post, share something valuable you've learned this week, comment on other people's posts. You don't have to post every time you open the app. You can post two or three times a week and spend your the rest of your time engaging with other people and be just as successful. And the last thing I would say is don't be afraid to ask for help. We have a ton of helpful resources on the Speaker Lab blog, on our Speaker Lab podcast. We have 
well over 500 episodes between this podcast, Talk Speaker to Me, and our main Speaker Lab podcast, there's chances are if there's a topic out there that you have more questions about, we've probably done a solo podcast episode talking about it. We also here at the Speaker Lab would love to help you if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're like, I have no idea where to start with my speaking business. I want to do this. This is my dream, but I don't know how to make it happen reach out. Our team would love to do that. We have an incredible team of coaches. We have an incredible student success team that would love to support you and cheer you on every step of the way. That does it for me. That does it for this episode of Talk Speaker to Me. As always, if you enjoyed this episode, I'd love for you to share it with your friends. Feel free to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen. That helps other people find this podcast and hopefully find helpful resources that are valuable to them. That does it for me. Signing off. 